you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before listening on. What we're going to do is draw a free body diagram for each of the three blocks. We'll begin with the free body diagram of the 10 kilogram block. You can ignore this green line here. For the 10 kilogram block, we have the gravitational force acting downward, which is mg, and then we have the tension T2 pulling up on the block. And so we've included those forces in the free body diagram. For the 3 kilogram block, we can see that there are several forces acting. We have tension T2 pulling the block to the right. We have tension T1 pointing to the left. Now because there's a block on top, and that block is sliding past the three kilogram block, there's actually a frictional force, a kinetic frictional force, acting between the two blocks. So we've included that force in the diagram. Notice that it's pointing to the left. And then of course there's a gravitational force acting down on the three kilogram block as well as a normal force. For the two kilogram block, which is being pulled to the left, we can see then that there's a tension force T1 acting to the left, and then there's that frictional force again. It's the same frictional force that we mentioned earlier. It's between blocks two and three. In this case, that frictional force will be pointing to the right because it's opposing the motion of the two kilogram block. Remember, this block is traveling to the left. That means that the kinetic frictional force will be opposing it and pointing to the right. So we've included that kinetic frictional force in the diagram. We then have the gravitational force acting down on block two and then a normal force. What we'll do next is apply Newton's second law to each block. We'll start with the 10 kilogram block. And of course we know the sum of the forces is equal to ma. We'll call the downward direction negative and the upward direction positive. So we've plugged in the two forces. Notice that this block is accelerating downward. So we have to make sure that we include a negative sign for the acceleration. So the right hand side would look like this. We'll fill in the value for the mass as well as g. We could then simplify this term. And we'll be left with this equation. We're going to go ahead and hold on to this equation and use it later. We'll next apply Newton's second law in the x direction to the second block. So we've plugged the three forces acting in the x direction into the equation. Notice that we're calling this direction the positive direction and this way the negative direction. The three kilogram block was accelerating to the right, so we're gonna leave the acceleration as being a positive value. We can plug in three kilograms for the mass. And for now, we're just gonna hold on to this equation. Now we go over to the two kilogram mass, which remember was accelerating to the left. We'll call this direction negative and this direction positive. Notice again that we're including a negative sign for the acceleration because it's moving to the left. We need to come up with a value for the kinetic frictional force. We recall that the kinetic frictional force is mu k times a normal force. If we look at the diagram, we can see that the normal force is equal in magnitude to the mass times g. So we can actually replace this with that mg force. We'll fill in the known value for the kinetic frictional force, which was given to us in the question, as well as the two kilogram mass and 9.8 for G. We can simplify this by multiplying it out on our calculator. And we can see that the kinetic frictional force becomes 5.88 newtons. That means over in this equation, we can plug in 5.88 newtons because that was the same kinetic frictional force that was acting between the three and two kilogram blocks. So we'll hold on to this equation and add it to the other two that we've developed so far. Now at this point becomes an algebra as opposed to a physics question, why don't we take the first equation and add the 98 over to the right hand side. We could then take this expression for T2 and plug it into the second equation. We could combine some like terms, these two terms can be added. We can also add the 10A over to the right hand side. So now we'll take this equation and we'll stack this equation right underneath it. Now for the second equation, what we want to do is eliminate the T1s, so we can change the sign of each term of the second equation, and then add the two equations together. Finally, we can divide both sides by 15. And when we do that, we see the acceleration is approximately 5.7 meters per second squared, so that would become the answer to part A of the question. Now that we have the acceleration, we can go back and plug it in to find one of the tensions. So for example here, we can plug in the acceleration and solve for T1. And when you solve this equation for T1, you should get approximately 17 newtons. So that would be the correct answer to part B. And then to find T2, we can come back to perhaps this equation right here and plug in our acceleration. And when we solve this equation for T2, we get approximately 
41 newtons, and that would be the correct answer to part C. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for other videos. You're welcome to send your own question into this email address and I'll do my best to post a solution to it on YouTube.